Hello, and welcome to the session on scaling and optimizing AppStream 2.0. My name is Navi McGee. I'm a senior solutions architect with AWS focused on end user computing. And I'm joined today by Gaurav Kapoor, Senior Manager for End User Services at Johnson & Johnson. Have you ever wondered how to scale your AppStream fleet? And if you have a fleet that's already deployed, have you ever wondered, is there anything additional that you can do to optimize it? Those are just some of the questions we're going to consider today in the session. Let's take a look at some of the key objectives today. We'll see how to manage the instance types. We'll learn how to scale and manage the AppStream fleet. Then we'll see a presentation by Garav of what Johnson & Johnson has done to scale and optimize their AppStream environment, as well as a demo. And finally, we'll conclude everything with some key takeaways that you can share with your teams and things that you can implement in your environment. Let's get started. When we think about AppStream and the availability of family instances, AWS provides a wide array of options. Those options include general purpose instances, compute optimized instances, memory optimized, graphics pro, graphics design, and graphics G4. But one thing to keep in mind is that one size doesn't fit all. You should align the compute instance type that you're targeting with the application workload. And what we like to do at AWS is we like to partner with our customers to provide prescriptive guidance on things that you can use or instance types that you can use for different application workloads. For example, if you're going to run an SAP GUI workload, that would align to our general purpose option. If you have MATLAB, that would align to our compute optimize. And then finally, if you're deploying SOLIDWORKS, that would be aligned to our graphic design workload. The key, again, is to be flexible with the instance types that, that are available. You have a wide array of family instance types that can easily use across multiple fleets, as many that you can consume and as, as you need uh, for the different use cases. But let's discuss what are some of the advantages of using AppStream with not only these workloads, but maybe the workloads that you have in mind at your company. Uh, let's take a look at the first one from SOLIDWORKS. SOLIDWORKS for many years wanted to have the ability to provide their customers with a, a method of easily testing their software. Uh, but the challenge was that in many cases, it required a large download, up to five gigs in size. And the problem was that it allowed their users to uh, take a, more time than expected to configure the environment, test it, and then make a decision. But what was the result? What was the outcome of using AppStream? Well, they were able to reduce that whole cycle down to a matter of seconds. And now their customers are able to test and run through different trials of their software at a faster clip. Let's take a look at another example here from MathWorks. Similarly to SOLIDWORKS, when MATLAB wanted to deploy their lab environments, in some cases, it took up to three days. But by moving over to AppStream, they're able to give their customers trial environments, lab environments that are easily able to be deployed and consumed by them. And as you notice, the reduction of time was up to 75%. Clearly, we see the advantages of using AppStream, the ability to easily scale out and scale in based off your needs and as well as the application you're going to run. But when we look at AppStream, there's another point to keep in mind, the running mode and running mode management. There are two different options available. The first one being an always-on fleet, and the second one is an on-demand fleet. With always-on, it's an instant connection that your user will experience, and the instance is always running 24-7. Uh, this is more geared towards a use case to where that your user is expecting an instant connection, maybe as a SaaS provider, or if they need some type of trial for the software, where that any type of wait time would not uh, be good for the overall user experience. The second running mode is on-demand fleet. With the on-demand fleet, there's a one to two minute wait time. Uh, when the user is not using or consuming the instance, well, the fleet can scale back in and it only uses a stop instance fleet, in which case that there's only a stop instance fee that's charged when not in use. Now, the question that remains is, 
which mode is right for me? Well, the answer is depends on the user experience that's required. If your user is expecting an instant connection, always on is, this, is the decision. If they're expecting an, um, an on-demand fleet or something that they can wait for one to two minutes, then the on-demand fleet option is the path. Now, when we think about scaling and scaling out the fleet, there are four different options that are available. Let's take a look at the first two, scaling out policies as well as scaling policies. With the ability to scale out policies, you as a customer determine at which interval and at which threshold your fleet will scale out. And this can be easily set by saying that if I have 100 instances or 100 virtual machines assigned to my fleet, and I want to start at a minimum capacity of five instances, and if my capacity reaches a 75% utilization of the fleet, then I want those instances to increase by X number up to the maximum of 100 instances. And on the other side, once there's no longer that demand for the increased capacity, you can use a scaling policy to reduce that number down to the minimum value as well. Again, the idea is that you as a customer get to control how you expand or decrease the number of instances available. Now, what if you have a predictable workload, a predictable pattern? Let's say that you have users coming on for the workday at 7 a.m. and you know typically around 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. they would uh, log off for the day. Well, with that, you can use a schedule policy. With schedule policies, you can determine the time in which your instances will start to scale out as well as at what time they would scale in. And the final option is a target tracking policy, which works hand in hand with our CloudWatch metric solution to use triggers and alarms at which it would determine at what point that fleet will scale out. Now, what about the optimization part of AppStream? The key they take away here is that there are five steps to optimization. The first one is right sizing the instance type. Previously, we mentioned how there's a wide array of family types for AppStream. Which workload or which family type is appropriate for my workload? Remember, with AppStream, you can have as many fleets as required. If you have multiple applications, you can assign one, two, or maybe all of them to various workloads or family types as, as needed. The second part is adjusting the scaling size. In the example that we have of 100 users connecting into the environment, uh, you may determine that you would like to scale out at 50% utilization of your fleet or 60% or even 75%. Again, that's something that you determine based on your needs and how you would like the system to respond to the need for your users. The next one is adjusting the fleet scaling interval. Uh, inside of the policy, and we'll see it in just a couple of slides here, you can determine how many instances are incremented based off each trigger. So if the fleet hits 75% utilization, you can say, I would like to increase by two, by three, 10 or 50 instances at a time until you hit the max value that's already established. And then the fourth one is verifying the running mode. There are two options here, always on and on demand. Which mode is right for me? If the user needs an instant connection, it should be the always on mode. If a one to two minute wait time can be allowed, then it would be the on demand fleet. And finally, and one of the most important options here as well is the continuous monitoring. As you set these policies, they can also be changed and it should be monitored periodically to tweak and adjust as needed. Now let's take a look at an example here and put it all together. In this particular use case, we're trying to deploy a set of applications for 100 users with 50% concurrency. The user's work is time sensitive and any delay is accessing the applications would be very costly to the company. So based off the key factors that we've covered today, what would you say? Well, for the running mode, it would be always on because as stated in the requirements, the work of the users is very time sensitive. But what about the policy? If you look on the left side of this slide, you'll see a sample of the scaling policy. And this is your scale out and scale in policies. We're setting the minimum capacity of the fleet at 50% at 50 instances because we're looking at 50% concurrency. 
and the maximum capacity equals the number, the maximum number of users that ex are expected to enter the system um, to consume the application at 100. If we notice that the scale-out policy, we're saying that if the capacity utilization of this particular fleet reaches 75% at the initial launch, which is set at 50, then I want to increment the number of instances at five until I hit the maximum value, that maximum capacity. And then on the other side, for scaling policies, if the capacity utilization of my fleet is equal to less than 25%, then I want to remove five instances until I go down to the minimum capacity, capacity that I set for the fleet. This is just one example of the type of policies that you can set for your workloads. And again, you can also use the other two options that we have as well. Schedule tracking, schedule policy, as well as tracking, target tracking policies. Now, with that in mind, let's take a look at how Johnson & Johnson has implemented their AppStream environment using, utilizing various policies and how they've optimized it for their workloads. Gaurav? Thanks, Navi. My name is Gaurav Kapoor and I'm part of Johnson & Johnson Technology Shared Services. Happy to be able to speak to you about how Johnson & Johnson is using AppStream 2.0. To give you a little background on the company, Johnson & Johnson was founded in 1886. We have over 200 operating companies across three business sectors. Our pharmaceutical sector has an industry-leading pipeline, advanced biologic, and other treatments. Our consumer sector has brands and data-driven consumer insights with baby and beauty products and health and healing products. Our medical device sector has a strong lineage of firsts with broad offerings across four franchise products and services in orthopedics, surgery, interventional solutions, and vision. As you can see with the varied business segments, all with different requirements and challenges to solve, we have a lot of applications. Not only are there a lot, many of them need to run on Windows. So AppStream and Johnson & Johnson is a good fit. Early on with AppStream, our focus was moving traditional Citrix apps to the cloud. We wanted to minimize our fleets and images. Our goal was to deploy a single fleet leveraging app layering to manage all our app diversity. App layering didn't achieve the production grade readiness we had hoped for. So we narrowed our scope and started small. Fast forward to today, we offer many use cases. BYOD secure access for common business applications and browsers. External partner application only access, mainly for our global service desk performing IT support functions. Specialized training and sales access to GPU backed instances. And offshore engineering teams using CAD and CAM applications. We continue to grow these offerings, which I'll talk about in the next few slides. Some emerging use cases we are also exploring. Creo Parametric Suite on AppStream Desktop Experience. If you're not familiar with Creo, it's a family of computer-aided design apps supporting product design. Along with Creo, the team needed to interact with other applications, so we're also enabling non-persistent desktop mode to ensure they have the best possible user experience. We're also looking to sh replace shared PCs with AppStream desktop experience using thin clients. Really excited about exploring this use case with AppStream, which is we're looking to leverage AppStream as part of the DevOps pipeline to include user acceptance testing for homegrown Windows applications at Johnson & Johnson. Now you know about our use cases, I wanted to focus a little on our virtual learning experiences. With specialized virtual training, a new demand has emerged for more specialized AppStream fleets. We've shifted our focus from a single fleet app layering approach to using highly automated dedicated fleets. In our medical devices division, new training simulators include software integrated solutions. These software integrated solutions often require high-end hardware and complex application installs. The businesses we were working with always relied on in-person training flying trainers in from all over the world to a central location. As you can imagine, this was costly and slow to market. As we started planning our first virtual application launch on AppStream, the COVID-19 era became a reality. We quickly accelerated the launch of our first virtual learning app on AppStream, 
It was a huge success from the beginning. We had representatives across the globe unable to visit customers in person, and it was the perfect time for them to use AppStream for their virtual learning simulators. Cloud-based solutions are needed now more than ever to connect remote users to learning resources. With the reduced need for travel, virtual access has transformed the way training is delivered across the globe in these scenarios. And we enabled field teams to drive live demos from any form factor anywhere. This has become a part of an overall focus on digital health innovations. A few details of our deployment. We have a general purpose fleet. It's available to all users, includes common business apps and browsers. It runs on the standard medium instance type and is always on. This is mainly used to support the migration of general business apps and internal web apps from our legacy Citrix environment. This fleet is shared service IT managed. We also have dedicated fleets for specific applications. Available to specific user communities focused on complex apps, compute memory, and graphics intensive apps. Various instance types are running. Some are ComputeX large, some are Graphics G4s, some are Graphics Design. The business and the app owners manage the application with standard OS policies and J&J compliance controls. The fleets are financially billed back to the internal co consumer. Some of the users are more cost conscious, so they want on-demand fleets. Some are less cost conscious, so they get an instant on fleet. The scaling rules are defined individually. Some, it's, it took us some time to really narrow in on some of the scaling rules. The virtual training classes will be held at ver various times of the day for many users across the globe. We had to ensure the scaling rules would support that. In some cases, we didn't have a predictable curve for when the users would use AppStream. With the very scaling logic AppStream support, we were able to accommodate all different applications and use cases. As we are standing up more fleets for different use cases, the need for automation has grown. We wanted to make setting up an AppStream fleet for application owners as simple as possible. The AppStream team did a great job of making all the APIs available that we needed to create our own self-service mechanism for end-to-end -end fleet management. On the diagram going left to right, we use ServiceNow for our end-user portal and workflow orchestration. You can use whatever you have or you can simply use S3 and AWS step functions. The orchestration interacts with REST APIs hosted by Amazon Ga API Gateway, which then interact with the AWS Lambda functions calling the AppStream 2.0 APIs. These are all running within your VPC. Everything you can do in the console can be performed via API. It's pretty simple, but very powerful. For us, putting the power in the hands of the application owner is important. It gets us out of having to be the interface to AppStream for someone who may not be familiar with AWS. Our plan is to automate the life cycle of the fleet from creation, scaling, maintenance, including OS patching, alerting and monitoring, as well as providing usage reports and financial billing. Now I'll kick into a demo of our self-service portal that we've created for AppStream fleet management. Now I'm going to kick into our demo of our portal for fleet management of AppStream 2.0. So as you see, the first time somebody logs into the portal, we'll give them some basic instructions on what AppStream is and the process they need to follow to get an AppStream fleet stood up. So I'll go ahead and click OK. I already have a profile stood up here, so I'm going to click right into the image and get my image builder going. So the first step is really to get an image uh, builder launched. So I'll go ahead and launch a new image builder. Here I have to choose my financial cost center, which I did. I'll type in a user-friendly name. And I'll choose my hardware instance type and operating system. All of these are ones that we allow from a central IT perspective. So as you can see, Windows Server 2019 is the only one available to the user. So I'll click Submit and click OK. And uh, that'll get my image builder going. And as you can see here, App Demo 5 is now in a pending state. So while that's going, I'll kick into an existing image builder I already have and get that going. So here I can uh, connect to it or I can stop it. I can also see additional information about the image builder. So I'm going to go ahead and connect and snap get my 
image builder as uh, snapshotted. So as you can see, this is the normal screen you usually see when you're connecting to an image builder. I have my app already configured here, and I'm just going to click next through this. Uh, one of the improvement opportunities we are looking to is get this all automated so we don't have to have the app owner uh, go through the image assistant. It can all be done through our portal. So I have my application, which is Notepad, and I'm going to just disconnect and create image. So while that's going, I will click back here. All right, so now we can see I have my image snapshotting, and that'll be the basis for creating my fleet. So now that we have our image all worked out, we're going to go back and go to fleet management. So typically here we require the user, the app owner to create a QA fleet, get their app all tested, and that way they can certify it for production. I'm going to go ahead and do that ahead of time. Uh, being the good app owner that I am, I'm going to say, yes, my app has been tested. It's all ready to go, and I want to get it in production, so I'll click certify. And I can refresh here, and you can see it's all certified. So what this allows me to do is now really go to the final step, which is uh, creating a production fleet. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll click on Create New Fleet. As you can see, I'm creating a production fleet. Again, I'll pick some cost center information for billback. I pick my region. Yeah, I'm going to pick NA here. And my image that I created earlier is now available to me. And it's like my hardware. I'm going to select, obviously, I'm more cost conscious, so I'll pick the, the stream uh, standard medium instance. Here we enable some user settings. Do you want OneDrive for business? I'm going to say no. The typical user settings, streaming session, disconnect timeouts, and the idle timeouts, I'll leave those as defaults. And here we ask some questions in terms of scaling and cost uh, parameters. So expected number of uh, concurrent users on a given day. So I'll say, let's say 10. Uh, how quickly do I expect these users to scale up within 15 minutes? So I'll say every 15 minutes I can expect, let's say, three users. Uh, daily expected average user session. So I'll say each user probably use it for two hours. Uh, number of expected unique users over a month. So maybe I have 200 users. And how frequently would one user connect? I'm going to say two to three times a week. And here I can pick my on-demand or always-on, and it will give me a cost estimation depending on what I want to do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say, that I'm going to make this always-on. I'm okay with the cost. And I'm going to click Next. And here it will give me a final summary of everything I just uh, uh, put in. And I'll go ahead and click Create Fleet. Again, I get a little confirmation that this is what uh, my... Estimated cost maybe, again, this is just an estimate based on the information I provided. Uh, you know, as we know, cloud will change those estimates based on actual usage. So I'll click Confirm. And that'll go ahead and start creating my fleet and link it to a stack. So if we go back to Manage Fleets here, I can see that my fleet is already in a running state. As you can see with the demo, our team has been working very hard to enable our application owners, providing them with a simple self-service mechanism for managing their own app stream fleet. We're also in the process of integrating with our single sign-on platform so users can automatically log in using their own credentials as soon as the fleet is running. To provide some more details, on the left here, you can see a sample workflow we have created that automates the fleet creation. There are wait conditions and calls to API Gateway that will automate the fleet creation and link it to a stack. On the right is one of the Lambda functions that the workflow interacts with using the API Gateway, inputting all the parameters to create the fleet. Everything is available via API to do the same for your environment. Later in the references on this slide deck, you can see the link to the workshop we leverage for some of our architecture. Well, a few lessons learned and takeaways as you may be beginning your AppStream journey. Embrace the flexibility of the cloud and AppStream. As we tried early on, one size doesn't need to fit all. AppStream allows for so many different instance types that you can solve a lot of virtual application challenges. 
For us, we have use cases that are very cost conscious, especially when you start using those graphics instances. The cost can add up, so taking a look at that on-demand versus instant-on experience will be important to see what makes sense for you. As we're growing with demand for virtual applications, we decided to put the control in the application owner's hands and let them drive. We want to enable their progress as quickly and as simply as possible. Using the power of cloud and automation, it makes it possible. Scaling rules are going to vary. As we were growing with different use cases, they all had their own peaks and valleys in terms of usage. It took some tweaking to get them right. As Navi mentioned earlier, I would also take a look at target tracking, which can really simplify your scaling rules. Finally, I think we all understand virtual learning is part of the new normal. AppStream 2.0 enables us to scale and optimize our business apps and virtual learning experiences to get to the next level at a pace we've never been able to do before. So thanks for listening today. I'm going to hand it back to Navi to close out the session. Thank you, Gara, for that great demo and presentation. So as a recap to what we've seen, what's the gist of it? What's some of the key things you can take away and share with your team? Well, first thing is that we want to make sure that you remember the five steps to optimization. Right-sizing the instance type for the workload. Checking on the scaling policy and the size of the fleet. Looking at the interval at which it expands or scales out as well as scale in. Looking at the running mode, always on, on all, or on demand. And finally, continuous monitoring. Those are just some of the key things to keep in mind as you optimize and scale your AppStream environment. But also we want to share a few references that you can take away as well as share with your teams. The first one, scaling your Amazon AppStream 2.0 fleets, as well as enterprise application onboarding workshop. My name is Navi McGee. Again, thank you for joining the session today.